There's somebody who said that the only reason that a revival delays is because people don't want it enough. And I have a word from the Lord about this. Thus saith the Lord, I have blessed you and you have become proud. Thus saith the Lord, I have blessed you and you have become proud. The Lord asked the Lord, who's that message for? Is it just Sozo Church of God? And the Lord said to me, no, it's my church in Kenya. I have blessed you. And then you've become proud. Today the Lord told me to tell you to sit down in an exercise and find who you are according to the word of God and who he says you are. And he said, as we enter 2024, we must begin to learn to pray using scripture. Because Satan is now doing something called adjudication. As Jesus is about to return, Satan is increasing from just the accuser of the brethren to demanding for prosecutions to be held. And I really need to ask God to help me speak in simpler language. In the year 2024, and starting now, not even the year 2024, one of the things Satan has moved into doing because of his desperation and because he knows Jesus' return time is near. He's also trying to stop revival because he knows revival is a great act of grace before we are taken home because God has said it's the last revival. It's the last opportunity. To say there is a whole lot of people who've never seen my glory. And because they are complaining about the church, the church, the church. I want to step down one more time in the form of revival. Because in revival, no one needs to tell you anything. You will get saved without anyone saying anything because of the glory of God filling the earth like we have just read. And the second thing God has told me to tell you, let me finish this prosecution story. So the Lord is saying that Satan has taken his lawyering to the next level. I once preached a message that says that Satan is a senior advocate. Find that message. I asked the Lord, when you read in Job chapter 1 and Job chapter 2, that the sons of God came before God and so did Lucifer. I'm like, but he's not a son of God. In this case, the sons of God was referring to the angels. He's a fallen angel. So you read in Job chapter 1. Then you read in Job chapter 2. And I'm asking the Lord, what is, was he doing? And for years I'd ask the Lord, what was he doing? And then suddenly I'm in the gym. And the Lord reveals to me. He comes there in his capacity as an official of the court. Now in not too long, I will receive that degree of being a lawyer. Shetani apende, asipende. However, I will not be an official of the court until I go to the Kenya School of Law. You're not an official of the court. Officials of the court are stated and listed. So in the courtroom of heaven, because Daniel chapter 7, we can go to Daniel chapter 7 and verse 10, it says that the courts were seated and the books were opened. There's a courtroom in heaven. And when Lucifer comes, you see the ACCG uh, DPP? Lucifer and your DPP. He's the chief prosecutor. He's the one who leads in bringing the cases. Because I said, that saith the Lord. What was the first one? I have blessed you and you have become proud. Write down the second one. There are many of you who are in the cave and I've been preparing you. It's time to come out. There are many of you who are in the cave and I've been preparing you. It's time to come out. The Lord is looking for his remnant. I saw a vision of children on the streets telling the president, 
you cannot do this to our country. And I'm going to lead that army of children, by the way, because as soon as I finish my exams like this, we are going. And there's a protection upon children, and I want you to put the preamble. Put the preamble of this constitution up. And this fast that we are fasting for 21 days, sorry, I forgot to tell you we are fasting, starting tomorrow for 21 days. For me, I can start today because I always move according to what the Lord is saying. And it's moving from 4th to 24th. 4th has two meanings. Kwenda Mbele. Okay? From here, hence, forth. I have the constitution of Kenya with me on my phone. If you don't, you really would need to. So it begins by saying, we the people of Kenya. When I asked the Lord, what are we calling this fast of the next 21 days? He said, we the people of Kenya. And he said, we begin fast by acknowledging we have sinned. We have sinned as a nation. In January of 2020, or was it February? Somewhere, when we were doing 100 days of prayer, just before COVID, I would stand here and stare. Of course, there were barely anybody here. I would stare out there, and that's why people don't even remember it. I would stare outside and say, God, what is coming? I'm seeing a lot of darkness. God, what is coming? And I'll be looking around, is it dark? I'm seeing so much darkness. I'm seeing so much darkness until the Lord said that ship that they are saying that at TCG people will not infect anybody. The ship has come from China. COVID has come. By that time they were saying black people are resistant to COVID. Do you remember that? And during these prayers early in the morning, the Lord said, you're not resistant to COVID. Arise and protect yourselves. During those 100 days, there was a day I said, I haven't even asked. I was on this side, I remember. I haven't even asked God who's going to be the next president of Kenya. Maybe I should. Okay. I don't think I'll ever do that again. Then I said, God was going to be president of Kenya. And then he said, William Ruto. And it's a video. I sat here. I said, guy. And I started crying. I said, my God, on camera. It's available. With a mic. I said, Father, is it judgment? And he said, yes. And I announced God says it is judgment. Sometime later, which I think was either last, either, anyway, it was sometime later. It's available online. This thing is available online. The Bible says that prophecy is a sign to the unbeliever. So that you can know God speaks. That could only have been God. One message. Is it judgment in 2020? Yes. Is it judgment, Lord? I've had mercy on Kenya, and he's going to be a David. Remember, David was a man of revival and worship. The thing with prophecy and why sometimes it can almost sound like it's, it's, it's contradictory is because it depends on what the people are doing. There's a scripture in Jeremiah that says, if I speak about a people to destroy them, and they hear and they repent, then I will not destroy them, but I will bless them. But if I speak about a people to bless them, and they sin against me, I need you to write it down, we're going to bring it up, then, it's in Jeremiah somewhere, I can't remember where, but the, the, the media team has it and they'll put it up. If I speak to bless them, and they sin against me, then I will turn and I will curse them. And that's exactly what's going on in this country. God has given us the platform and we can arise and we can speak but we are speaking more of based on who we are in God as the church of Jesus Christ we are arising and we are saying no so the, 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 the message I was giving you today the prophetic word that the Lord was releasing was we are starting a fast starting tomorrow um, for me I believe I've started it already and we need to remember several things. One, the way God has blessed us, we become proud, so we begin with repentance. We begin with repentance. The second thing is that issue of those who are in the caves. Some people are in the caves because they don't think they are anything and can make a difference. Others are in the caves because you're going through a lot in your life. 
Satan has ensured you're so embattled that you don't know what to do. So yeah, so the, the, so the second thing, so the first thing is repentance. The second one is whatever you're going through, you need to come out of it. You have to come out of it. It's time to do what you need to do for the Lord because the Lord needs you. He's waiting for you. Three times, Elijah said, I'm the only one left. Even once he told the people, I'm the only one left. But he wasn't the only one left. God told him he had how many others? 7,000 others. Who have not done what? Bowed to Baal, nor kissed his hand. Okay? And also those who have been praying for revival and asking God to not pass us by, the Lord is saying you're not the only ones and don't be overwhelmed to think that you're the only ones. And the third thing that the Lord said is revival is coming to Kenya. Don't clap yet. He said this. He said, this revival is coming to Kenya. And he said, because I've made a promise to this country. And he said, either the revival will come through us. And by through us means, I need children. Children, come. So he gave two options. Just come quickly, please. Okay. I want you to stand here and I need the cameras to focus on these children. I want you to form a line. So the Lord gave two options. One option would be very painful. So revival can either come, I need you to face me, form a line, face it, no. Um, I need you to form a wall in front of me. A wall, a wall, a wall. So if the, if the people of Kenya, form a wall, form a wall. If the people of Kenya are going to continue with the resistance that they're having and disinterest in him, the revival is going to come I can't hurt the children, but you can imagine if as an adult, I ran into these children and hit them. Because of my strength, what would happen to these children? They would fall, they would fly, some would break, whatever it is, so I can't. Uh, I'm not allowed to do that, but I can go towards my child. But if I go at them with such force, you can imagine the force of revival from heaven and the glory of God coming on man. So if Kenyans form a wall like this, to stop God, to interfere with God, or to resist God, or to disrespect God, or act disinterested in God, as some of you were doing earlier today, this revival will come and it's going to destroy people. It's going to destroy people, it's going to hurt people, it's going to kill people, it's going to just cause damage, and then, assuming the children are now or whatever, then it will go through and continue with those on this other side and do what God wants, the faithful. So he said, you have two options, Kenya, because the revival must come. And when I asked him, why do you say that? He says, because the number of people, including you, has pleaded with me not to allow it to pass. So because of those ones who bend and say, Lord, do not pass us by, because they know what happens if revival passes you. So then it's going to either hit them, including children, those of you children who are big enough and know you have no business doing what you've been doing, but you've been doing it. Go right through with a lot of damage. Just like a river bursts its banks. Somebody in TZ said, the rivers, until there's no flooding in Tanzania, the rivers are just going back home. People have built where rivers used to be, and so the rains have come, and the rivers are going home. The guy said, flooding is when I'm on a hill. And then the water comes to me on the hill. But if I'm in the valley, and I'm near a river, and I'm seeing rain coming, well, it will just come home. Revival is going to be like that. It's a flood. It's a flood. Some people will say it's a flood because they are drowning or because it's destroying, because it's killing. But those who are on the heel of the Lord will just be saying, come Lord Jesus, come Lord Jesus. It's just revival. You know, we've romanticized revival. So God says he's given Kenya two options on this third point. Option one, keep resisting, keep forming a wall, and the revival will come anyway and break those walls and go through to the other side of what it needs to be done. Now, children, you've heard what I've just said. 
So if God is saying that, and this is revival coming, and you don't want it to do that to you, to hurt you, what will you do? What will you do? It's coming, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. What will you do? 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 You receive it. But what I would say the Lord is looking for is not kneeling. You get, you get out of his way by prostrating yourself. If you prostrate yourself, let me show you what will happen. Prostrate yourselves. Revival is coming. God is moving at a high level. It will pass over you as a wind. It will just pass over you as a wind. Because even is it called ergonomics? When it comes to cars and planes and all that, their shape, they'll move faster if they don't resist the wind. But allow the wind not even to notice that they're there. So the Lord is asking us to take on this posture so that he can come. And as he passes, he will bless. Hallelujah. He will bless. Hallelujah. He will bless. Hallelujah. So we have two options. There's a reason we're using children. Because the Bible says that the kingdom of God is for those who are innocent like them. I didn't have to teach them anything. They knew what to do. Let's appreciate the future generation. God bless you, children. Remember, you're the first ones to hear this message here in front. You have demonstrated. So when you go doing things you have no business doing, just remember, revival is coming. Either it will destroy you or it will bless you. Amen? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah.